Well, good morning, everyone, or should I say good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here and to be looking out at so many people, all of you that have been involved in one way or another, to make the health care for our residents in this area absolutely the best that can possibly, can possibly be. You know, I drive past this hospital just about every day that I'm in town. And over the last three to four years, I've seen the construction that's been taking place here. And the tremendous, uh, and always with a wish, of course, but when is it going to be over? When is it truly going to be over and when is it going to be uh, opened up? Because we all here realize the state that our cancer care center was in before. And not so much the, obviously, the care that people got on a day-to-day -day basis in one way or another, which has always been excellent but more in the way in which they approach the centre itself. We remember the dungeon underneath the, uh, the, uh, the roadway going up to the emergency department. And I often thought to myself, uh, having come in here over the last number of years, what kind of an impression will this have on the people that we're really doing this all for? And that is the patients. And obviously, uh, I would think that it wouldn't put them in the best frame of mind. And now having seen the redevelopment that has taken place, not only with respect to the cancer care center, but with respect to the mental health unit, with respect to the new dialysis unit, the patients of this area will be so much better served, not by the people, that's always been excellent, but by the surroundings that they're in as they're taking the kind of treatment and care that's required for them in order for them to lead a more productive life and to overcome the difficulties that they have. And just looking out upon each and every one of you, and I know just probably about 90% of the people in the room here right now, each and every one of you bring back a different memory that I have of your involvement with the healthcare system. As many of you have probably heard in the past, I've always said it's about the patient. It's not so much about our institutions. It's not so much about the different organizations that we have. We all want it to work well together, so many different ways, but it's always centrally focused on what is best for the patient. And so I just want to, on behalf of my own behalf and on behalf of the government, and you'll be hearing from the minister in a few moments, a thank you for your involvement. Whether it's on the board, whether it's as a donor, whether it's as a, a, a patron of this hospital, whether it's a, the actual caregiver on a day-to-day -day basis, the, all the professional health care uh, givers in this hospital or wherever else in the community. This community would not be the community that it is, the caring kind of community, without your involvement on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you to each and every one of you for an outstanding job and for for caring for our community to make sure that the people here in southeastern Ontario are looked uh, after in the best possible way. I now want to introduce you to someone that uh, I've come to know extremely well over the last eight to nine years, an individual who is truly compassionate and dedicated to everything she does. She's a doctor as well, a doctor in demography. Not quite the doctors that we have here necessarily. An individual who has always shown a tremendous, uh, a tremendous, not only regard, but compassion for the less vulnerable in our society. She started out her ministerial career about four years ago as Minister of Community uh, of, of Children and Youth Services. And in that regard, she was asked by the minister, by the premier, to basically develop a uh, poverty strategy that has been adopted across the House by all parties, and that is to reduce the poverty, the, the poverty situation for young children in our, in our province by 25 per cent over the next five years. And from that, of course, she's become the Minister of Health. Uh, I can tell you just from the number of individuals that we've already met with today, and we met with all of the caregiving organizations that are now united under the LIN in the new governance model that it has, has devised. We've met with the patient council here, in, uh, here at the Kingston General Hospital, and we've seen the operating rooms, we've seen the cancer care facilities here. Her interest in that work is genuine and deeply felt. 
And I think we in Ontario, regardless of whatever political stripe you may be, are extremely, are extremely fortunate to have someone that cares as much about what happens to the health care system and to the health of the patients in Ontario as much as our Minister of Health. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you someone that I've come to regard as a very close friend, someone who's truly interested in making sure that the health care that we have in the future will be able to live up to the ever-changing demands that we have as a society. Please help me welcome to the Kingston General Hospital and to Kingston and the Greater Kingston area, the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, Deb Matthews. Deb. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, John. You know, I have to tell you that uh, when you sit in cabinet with someone and you sit in a caucus with someone and uh, our seats in the House are just... Uh, uh, there's just one person between us. You get to really know people, and uh, you get to know them in good times, and you get to know them in tough times. And uh, I tell you, my uh, respect, my admiration, my affection for John Garretson couldn't be stronger. We are um, allies on many issues. Some of those we win and some we don't. But uh, I tell you, you, uh, you have sent a remarkable person down to Queen's Park, and I'm just delighted to be here with you today, John, so thank you so much. Yeah, today is a day of celebration. There is so very, very much to celebrate. I knew when I came here um, some things on paper that were to be celebrated. I knew that we are we're celebrating the opening of this wonderful new cancer center. I knew the difference it would make for patients. I knew that we were celebrating the completion of a wonderful almost $200 million capital project. I knew that we were celebrating a remarkable, a remarkable success here at Kingston General Hospital. You know, this is a, uh, a hospital that has gone through some tougher times. But I tell you, you have really demonstrated that when people work together, when people focus on what's possible, remarkable things can happen. You have uh, uh, wrestled that deficit to the ground. Your patient care indicators are all going in the right direction. Uh, you are doing remarkable work. What I didn't know this morning when I left Toronto to come here was how much love there is in this place. No matter where I've gone, I have been blown away by the commitment and the attention and the care and the love that, is, that permeates this organization. So, Leslie, I don't know what you've done, but uh, it's remarkable and it's tangible. And Dale, I met uh, with the uh, Patient and Family Advisory Committee this morning. They're leading not just Ontario, but I think they're leading Canada when it comes to hearing the voice of the people we all say we're here for, and that is patients. And I tell you that uh, that committee, uh, that uh, advisory group, takes the responsibility very, very seriously. And I tell you, if there's one voice we should listen to, it's theirs. So I want to say congratulations for taking that responsibility seriously and for really leading some of the change that, uh, that is so clearly happening here. I had the pleasure of meeting some people in the cancer, um, uh, the cancer area where, right here, and I tell you whether it was that wonderful woman named Audrey, I don't know if Audrey came down here or not, an 83-year-old woman who is fighting breast cancer and very proud to show us the care she's getting, but she said, I get the best care. Everyone here is so kind. I met a couple from Bancroft, the wife. Today is her first day of, uh, of, uh, of treatment. She says, everyone is wonderful. I met another gentleman who's celebrating his final day here. And he, he, all he can talk about is how wonderful the people are, how great the care is. So I want to say congratulations to every single one of you. You wouldn't be here if you weren't part of, of this miracle at Kingston General Hospital. 
It takes so many people to get to where we are today. It takes the donors, and it takes the man who wrestles that money out of those nice fat wallets. I want to say thank you. I want to say, because I also know, I've done some fundraising my own, I also know that every time you ask for money, you actually are making a commitment to give to, the, to their campaign. So I know it's expensive to, uh, to run a campaign. I want to say thank you to the people from Infrastructure Ontario who have made, um, brought this project in under budget and four months ahead of schedule. I want to say thank you to, uh, to the Lynn. Wynne Turner is here, the chair of, our, of our, the Southeast Lynn, who works very, very hard to make sure that uh, our system works as best as it possibly can from the perspective of the patient. Um, Leslie, you are a star, and uh, I am just so proud of the work that you have done here. And you know the writing about the about what's happening at Kingston all over the place. A lot of people are watching what's going on here. Uh, Chris Cunningham, where are you? Right here. Congratulations. This is a remarkable accomplishment. Um, I want to say also thank you to the Ministry of Health. Uh, I think Carolyn Beatty is here from the Ministry, uh, working in the background, making it all work. We have so much to celebrate. I am just so proud to be here with you. I also want to, um, to say a special thank you to John Gerritsen. You know, um, John is a wonderful man. He's also a colossal pain in the neck. <laughs> and um, when he wants something for his community, he is relentless. He does not stop. He does not take no for an answer. When he came and said, Deb, carpets? A hospital with carpets? I think we can fix that, can't we? Uh, <laughs> um, he is such a tremendous, uh, tremendous advocate for this community. So it takes uh, many, many, many people to get to where we are today. Uh, but I do think that John deserves special credit for making sure this project got the funding that it did. So congratulations to everyone. Thank you, everyone. It is a true honor to be here with you today. Thank you. Minister, thank you so much for being here, and thank you everyone for coming and joining us today. I see so many friends and uh, great champions of Kingston General Hospital, and from our foundation partners, our donors, our hospital partners, our former board chairs, and, uh, and great supporters of the, uh, of the organization, and so many of our staff, too, that are here to celebrate. Your words, it, it's hard to explain how amazing it is to have you here. Uh, we've always enjoyed the support of John and, and it has been remarkable and of the city. But to have our minister here, especially um, at this point of so many uh, things over the past number of years that the staff have worked so hard to accomplish, it just means so very, very much, and, and we really thank you. And there's a lot more good to come, because a lot of what I see and, and what I have the good fortune of being part of here as the leader um, is the tremendous road that we're on. We've turned a very big corner, and, and just keep a good eye on us, because we're really, I know now, having the chance to set the pace for others. We're continuing to learn. We're excited about the Health Action Plan going forward because this is a time, and working closely with our colleagues in the Lynn, that health care reform is on a new path. And we are very pleased and grateful to be part of that. You can count on us for doing our part because I know people here are energized and enthusiastic about the future and guided by the patients who are at the center of everything that we do in word and in deed, um, we know that we will continue on the right path. So thank you, everyone, for coming to make today such an incredible, incredible accomplishment. 
you know, with the, when things like this happen too, and we know all the behind the scenes that enable this to, to come across. I can't think, I'm looking at Ted Darby and, and his team, the Capital Projects team, and with Infrastructure Ontario, people have done unbelievable work. We have survived floods, blackouts, um, multiple, multiple changes of so many things that make this place work on a 24-7 basis. And always, 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 it's the patients first. It's part of the character and the DNA at, patient, uh, at Kingston General Hospital. So thank you all so very much for joining us today. And, uh, and enjoy feeling great about this celebration. And um, we look forward to many more celebrations to come. Thank you so much, all.